so I just got my second shot of Pfizer. And while I'm not going to talk about the pros and cons of vaccines, before the 5G kicks in and I go to buy an Xbox, I just wanted to acknowledge how I'm feeling right now. That after over a year since our lives were completely upended in a blink of an eye and we were forced to adapt to all the crazy things that are happening in our world, it feels so good right now to have a sense of control again, that we get to decide what happens in our lives. And while the past 13 months have shown us that we can't always control what happens to us and you know things don't always go as we planned or expected, there is one thing that we can control. And that's what I want to talk about today. There are so many things that we just can't control as much as we would like to. Other people, our past, sudden health emergencies, nature and natural disasters, cats. We spend so much time trying to have our hands on everything, only to constantly lose grip and get frustrated when things don't go our way. But life gets a lot easier when we give up the things that we can't control and focus exclusively on what we do have the ability to change. The only thing that we can control is ourselves. We get so caught up in our day-to-day -day life, trying to study for that test, trying to finish that project by the deadline, trying to make sure that our friends know that we don't hate them. We're so busy thinking about everything else and everyone else that we so easily forget to take care of ourselves. And when you think of it, we are the only ones that we have any control over. We certainly can't control how other people think and feel and what their actions will be. We don't get to decide where we're born and the family and circumstances that we're born into. We don't get to choose our genetic physical characteristics. But often all these things end up being huge points of stress and insecurity in our life. And we spend years feeling like a victim of our own circumstances. And we get disappointed time and time again when things happen that we really had nothing to do with. So if we want to get rid of this feeling of lacking control, we have to prioritize ourselves and treat our bodies and our minds with the attention and care that we're so used to giving to everything else. Okay, we all know that we're supposed to be eating a balanced diet with lots of nutrients, drinking as much water as we physically can, and getting our bodies moving every day, but how many of us actually do that consistently? It's so easy to push those things off and take the path of least resistance, which is not exercising, and then just grabbing the quickest thing to eat that we can find. And I get it, we all have so much going on and it can be really hard to find the time and energy to lift weights and to make ourselves sweat, to go buy healthier foods and find the time to cook them. But you probably still feel guilt for not exercising or not eating right, and that compounds every single time that you miss a workout or order takeout. So even when you have a busy schedule and you're not feeling super motivated, you have to try and push yourself to do some sort of physical activity for at least 20 to 30 minutes a day and at least a few times a week. If you've had any point in your life where you've been consistent at your workouts, you know how good it feels to get that adrenaline rush and to look at yourself in the mirror and see your progress. Before I started riding my bike and going to the gym in college, I felt absolutely terrible physically. I wasn't obese but I had pretty low energy and I definitely wasn't in good enough shape to run more than 30 seconds without being winded. But once I forced myself to start doing cardio more regularly, and once I forced myself to sign up at the gym, it absolutely changed my life. I felt so much better about myself, I got in such great shape, and it improved my confidence and my self-esteem tremendously. When I graduated and got out into the real world, it definitely got a lot harder to find the time to exercise consistently but I will always make it a priority in my life to work out as much as I can because I get to decide and control that. Exercise and diet go hand in hand, so once we get ourselves into a consistent workout routine, we don't want to ruin all of our progress by eating recklessly. So naturally we become a little more mindful of what we eat. And that doesn't mean that we all need to strictly count calories and macronutrients and obsess over every little thing that we're putting into our bodies. But we can make an effort to always make the healthier choice when we're at a restaurant or at home and to eat less of the things that we know just aren't good for us. You get your pet the highest quality food so that they can live a long and healthy life, but don't you want to live a long and healthy life too? What we put into our bodies is what we get out of them. So when we eat like shit, we feel like shit. And as nice as it is to eat a delicious greasy baconator, 
We feel terrible afterwards, and at some point you stop enjoying eating like that because it makes you feel so guilty and gross. So what's the point of continuing to eat junk when the guilt and discomfort that we feel is arguably even more destructive than the sodium and garbage that we're pumping through our blood, and we're not even fully enjoying it? If we make more responsible food choices and eat more natural and nutrient-filled foods, we'll give our bodies the fuel that it needs to perform at its best, and we'll feel better about ourselves for taking good care of ourselves. And one last note about taking care of our bodies is the importance of sleep. To have enough energy and to think clearly, we have to give our bodies a sufficient amount of rest. When I was in high school, I would sleep like four to five hours a night, and every night was the same. I would watch reruns of Seinfeld and Friends until 1 a.m., and I had to be up at 6 a.m. for school. And guess how I felt? Absolutely terrible. I was a walking zombie every day, and it felt like my mind wasn't functioning properly. What we do to take care of our bodies has a huge impact on our mind. And that brings us into the next part of ourselves that we do have the ability to control. Our mental health is just as important as our physical health. And just as we want to control our bodies and give it the right fuel and the right amount of care, we should treat our mental health and our thoughts with the same level of attention. It's not always our fault if we fall into depressive thoughts or experience strong feelings of anxiety. There's a reason that these things are called disorders, and it's not like we're choosing to feel this way. But regardless of if you have a diagnosed condition, or if you just find yourself stuck in a negative rut because of an accumulation of things that have happened to you, there are steps that we can take to improve. First off, if you do have clinical depression or any other disorder, seek out professional help. There's nothing to be embarrassed about, and these people spend their whole careers dealing with similar situations as yours. And they can help you change your mindset and prescribe you the right medication if you need them. And I know it can be expensive, and it can be hard to find the right person that you click with, but you are your best investment. And if that new jacket that you got is worth a few hundred dollars to you, then I feel like your mental health should be worth even more. And if you just find yourself constantly perceiving things in a negative way and feeling like a victim of your own circumstances, or if you're just feeling burnt out and uncreative and antisocial, we can try to do a few different things to boost our happiness. One of them, as we just discussed, is taking care of our bodies and treating them the right way. People might not realize how our mental health improves when our physical health improves, but they are so intertwined because we feel so much better and more confident about ourselves when we're in better shape and when we can look in the mirror and be proud of the person staring back at us. Another simple thing that you can do is have conversations with your friends and family and even strangers sometimes. Having genuine interest in other people and asking questions about things that they are passionate about can help us feel so much better and it helps us realize that we're not alone in life. And these are the people that love you and care about you and they want to spend time with you and help you find your best self. When we get into negative ruts, we tend to keep to ourselves and snap back at people more easily, and sometimes we just altogether avoid talking to people because we'd rather wallow in our self-pity. But having conversations and spending time with the people that we love can stimulate our mind and it reminds us that we have a support system to help us get through the ups and downs of life. But in those moments that we do just want to be in our own head, Practicing meditation is a surefire way to relax our mind and to improve our thoughts. And whether that's using a guided meditation or just simply taking a minute to breathe deeply and to listen to some happy sounds or songs that we like, that can help calm us and help us take control of our mental health. You've probably heard the phrase that we can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we react to it. And I think my primary goal with every topic that I discuss here is to help people change their attitude and to build a more positive mindset. Changing our perception of the world is the strongest thing that we can do for ourselves because we'll be more grateful for what we have, we'll be more understanding and sympathetic to others, and we'll generally have a better outlook on life because we'll realize that things could always be a lot worse than they really are. And after all, we all want happiness anyway, so we should try and do our best to choose that for ourselves. This topic is something that I feel so strongly about and means so much to me. I really don't think there's any good excuse for not taking care of yourself while you're spending all your time focused on less important things and cluttering your body and mind with things that aren't good for you. We have one life to live, and nothing is more important than living it happily and healthily. And even when things get challenging and time is limited, we owe it to ourselves to put in the effort to give our bodies and our minds the love and care that they deserve. 
We obviously can't go back in time and start things sooner or do things differently, but we can always start now and make a better future for ourselves. We all love feeling in control, so let's give ourselves the control of our physical health and our mental health, because that's all we can truly ever change. Thank you so much if you stuck around this far. I think it's so important that we all take the time to self-reflect and to focus on the things that we can change and to stop worrying about the things that we can't. And that's not easy for me to do, it's not easy for anyone to do, but I hope that we can all make an effort to take better care of ourselves because we are all that we've got. So thanks again and take care.